Well, welcome back to Bible Class. Glad that you're here with us and looking forward to studying another portion of God's Word together. We have been studying on Wednesday evenings the idea of premillennialism, and today starts our last nine classes of this quarter. And what we're going to be doing is I'm going to give you some general define and defeats. And what we're going to do is give you a doctrine, give you how it would be generically defined or generally defined even, and then we're going to give you the way to defeat this doctrine. Now, that doesn't mean to say that everybody is going to hold to it this exact way. That's why I use the word generally believe. Uh, some portions of premillennialism are not the exact same. They're, they're a little different. And so we're going to start today with rules for interpreting prophecy. And I'm going to share my screen with you all so that you can see the Bible that I'm using. And so uh, you'll be able to, to see that on your screen. Uh, here we go. So this is rules for interpreting prophecy. We're going to start with uh, the defining of it. Now, some premillennial... Uh, views and ways of interpreting prophecy would include the following. There's this piecing together of various verses. There's the use of double application of scripture. There's ignoring of the general nature of some prophecies, and there's this insistence on a literal interpretation. But we need to look at how this is used. In fact, let's go over to Exodus chapter 7 here in verses 1 and 2, and let's see how the Bible talks about this. The Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of, the, out of his land. Genuine prophecy involves a concise time. Exact fulfillment is also necessary, not a partial fulfillment. If God's going to say that something is going to happen, it has to happen. It, it can't be something that God says, well, half of it's happened, and the other half will happen some point down the road. That's not how actual exact prophecy takes place. There has to be a generic, uh, an accurate, let me say it right. There has to be a complete fulfillment. There can't be a partial fulfillment. Now, let's look at our second define and defeat. And these classes won't necessarily be as long at times. Some of them will, but some of them won't. But our second define and defeat for today is the kingdom the prophet saw. So we talked about rules for interpreting prophecy. And now we're talking about the kingdom the prophet saw. Now, to define this, we need to look at the following. Some premillennialists generally will believe that Israel rejected Christ when he first came as he was not the political king that people thought he should be. The church then had to be established as a failsafe. Uh, the true kingdom is yet to come. Well, let me give you an overview of the word of God. Jesus is coming. That's basically Genesis 3 all the way up until Matthew. Jesus is here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then Jesus is coming again, Acts through the book of Revelation. And so we have that general timeline of the Bible, but I want you to notice, and I'm going to showcase it again. I'm going to share my screen and show you where in the Bible these passages are as far as where the chapters are. We're first going to look at Daniel chapter 2. I want us to look at Daniel chapter 2 together, and I want you to notice that as Daniel is interpreting this dream down here in verses 31 and following, he tells the king that there's in the last days, verse 44, let me look at that with you together. In the last days, in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And so here we have what God has said is going to happen. That's a prophecy of the kingdom. But it's not just Daniel chapter 2. Isaiah also talks about it. Let me just show you the chapter at least. The mountain of the Lord, Isaiah chapter 2, talks about this mountain. The judge of the, uh, he shall judge among the nations, rebuke many people. They shall beat their soul, swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn anymore. And then there's this day of the Lord that they're talking about. And this is a direct prophecy of the kingdom, and that is the church. There's another one, and that is Joel chapter 2. Show you this real quick. It also talks about the day of the Lord, and it talks about all of these in, in verses 1 through 11 about God's kingdom being established in this chapter. And then you get to Acts chapter 2, and what is it that takes place? When you come down to Acts 2, you find Paul or Peter's sermon on Pentecost. And one of the very things that Peter speaks about is this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days all of these things are going to take place. And he says that in verses 16 and verse 17 here, and in verse 18 as well, all the way down until verse 21. 
And we have here the kingdom being established because when it gets down to verse 37 and they say, well, what, what do we do? Peter replies and says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I have the King James Version on here right now. Normally, I use the New King James Version, but ghost there could also mean just spirit, the Holy Spirit. Ghost meant guest in the translation that the King James writers used, uh, the, the translators used, that is. And so when you read that word there, that's what it means. But it gets all the way down here in verse 41, and it talks about, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And in verse 47, we're told that people were added to the church daily. And so here's the prophetic passages coming into existence. The kingdom the prophet saw was not Jesus coming and establishing a kingdom on earth. Isaiah 2, Joel 2, Daniel 2 all talked about a future kingdom that would be established. And Acts 2, it was established. Not to mention the fact that Matthew 16, 18 talks about Jesus establishing his church his kingdom upon the rock solid truth that he was the son of God. And so those are two defining defeats that you can utilize to help people that may have a hang up and may have heard something with a premillennial mindset. And I hope that that's been beneficial to you. I want to thank you for studying with us and Lord willing next week, we'll pick up with two more defining defeats.